Sahara TV, you're welcome back. So we continue with a discourse on this historic day, the events and issues related, and also look forward into the future to see what Nigerians expect from President Buhari, who was sworn in not too long ago. On the line, we have Kayode Ogundamisi. Kayode Ogundamisi is a campaigner, he's a human rights campaigner. I'm sorry, he's an anti-corruption campaigner, and he's also a blogger and a TV presenter with Ben TV in London. Mr. Gundamisi was also a member of the National Campaign Committee for President Buhari. You're welcome to Sara TV, Mr. Gundamisi. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for your time, sir. So, you are in the UK now, but you closely followed every aspect of the inauguration. Your impression, sir? Um, I think um, it was a very impressive um, a scenario. Uh, for the first time in Nigeria, we saw an incumbent uh, president hand over to an opposition party uh, produced president. And um, it went on smoothly. Uh, it was quite an emotional moment for most Nigerians because you could see they've been expecting a change uh, after 16 years of um, more or less um, very low performance by the uh, former ruling PDP, People's Democratic Party. So uh, I was quite impressed. But of course, um, not uh, forgetting the fact that it's a great challenge ahead for the new president and commander in chief of the Nigerian forces. Totally. So, um, President Buhari is uh, taking office and inheriting a litany of issues, like every president does, as a matter of fact. Top on this, as he's mentioned in his speech, is the Boko Haram um, situation. Um, he has outlined some what something of a roadmap to tackle this issue. Did you think about this? You are, you are a member of the Office Planning Committee. Did you think of this as part of the manifesto, or is it something that's like an update? Uh, if you listen to, uh, there was one very important part of his speech that will resonate to uh, military strategists, and mm -hmm. which uh, I, I wonder how the outgoing government didn't get to see that coming. Uh, he said, uh, there is no way you can defeat Boko Haram by uh, basing your command and control structure in the comforts mm -hmm. of your condition offices in that. Budget, and he made it clear that he's going to relocate the command and control structure to Maiduguri, so that generals who have been feeding fat on the on the resources of um, uh, foot soldiers, mm. uh, their salaries, their welfare would go to very close to the uh, uh, theater of war, and and they know that they need to submit. Uh, to the welfare of the brave men and women who fight to provide security for uh, uh, millions of Nigeria, but especially our, our compatriots in the northern part of, who have been in a state of war in the past uh, 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 seven to eight years. Um, so um, he, 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 Buhari had made it a very huge part of his campaign that the insecurity in Nigeria, especially insecurity in northern Nigeria, will be uh, a very primary uh, part of his um, focus when, when he takes over, as he's taking over as president of Nigeria. So I wasn't surprised that, um, that he, he made very clear signals to, as to his intentions in tackling uh, Boko Haram insurgency and insecurity across Nigeria. Mm. I'm sure this will be great news for a lot of um, our army staff, especially the foot soldiers, as you know, you referred to earlier on. Um, this is definitely a morale boost, booster for all of them. But there are other Nigerians Nigerians and indeed other, you know, non-Nigerians who who would suggest that this is just semantics. How much impact is moving the the you know the head of, of the army, if you will, the head of the command to Maiduguri? They are not going on the field to fight. How much impact do you really expect this to make? 
Well, you're, you're right. And for those of us who, who, support, uh, who supported Buhari uh, to emerge as a president and commander in chief, the support we're giving him is not an unlimited support. It is, um, is, it is tied with demands, demands that, uh, that are genuine demands uh, made by the Nigerian people that you have to walk the talk. Uh, gone at, you can write very fine, you can make, you can deliver very. But if you don't walk the talk, the romance and the marriage with Nigerians will break down uh, because Nigerians are uh, justifiably impatient. You know, they placed their, their trust in the last six years on the president who promised fresh air, but they got foul air, uh, who had no shoes, but ended up uh, buying um almost 12 to 13 presidential jets. So if Buhari is talking about change and Nigerians don't see that change in the next six months, you will be sure that people will go back to the barricade. But well, having said that, it was clear that um, we were confident because he identified corruption as the reason why our armed forces seems to be in, uh, in, in, in the state in which we find ourselves. Uh, first, uh, when you say move the command structure, you're talking about uh, that army or um, senior army officers who end up being contractors, who end up just uh, feeding fat on on the on the resources that are meant to, uh, to purchase equipment for our, for our soldiers, who go down there and see what is happening, and if, if they fail to do what they are paid to do, they 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 kicked out of uh, of our military. Uh, we, we should see a stop where low-level soldiers end up being uh, sentenced to death for calling for uh, a, a judicial uh, supply of weapons that they need to fight the insurgency. Mm. So I, I am quite confident that knowing Buhari's, uh, President Buhari's and as a former military ruler, who dealt decisively with um, uh, Mitasini insurgency when he was military uh, ruler, that um, he would that, uh, see this as one of the serious uh, business of government that he should address. And uh, don't forget the fact that he is also affected by this insurgency. He was um, attacked by Boko Haram. He has got a lot of internally displaced people from uh, is, is part of the country. So mm -hmm. he recognized that this is a very important issue that should be addressed. If he doesn't address it, then uh, Nigerians would have to hold him table. And in four years, he will be finding himself out of office just the way Jonathan was booted out of office by the Nigerian people. Mm -hmm. So the, the president has also indicated that there will be no witch hunting. He, he says he, he has no interest to um, pursue anybody, you know, on, on <laughs> those grounds. Um, do you think he's he's just like bowing to the the dictates of a so-called democratic strategy, whereby he 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 has to sacrifice, you know, the the what every Nigerian expects that corrupt people are dealt with on the altar of being politically correct? Yeah, the good thing about Boa and those of us who support Buhari is that we can disagree with him even if we support him. Uh, for someone like me who has had a number of times uh, campaigning uh, against corrupt uh, practices by uh, politically exposed Nigerians and the role we played in making sure James Ibori gets locked up deservedly in Britain, we are a bit worried that the, pres the new pres the president of the country, President Buhari, has been repeating this issue of Let's turn the edge. Let's um, just face uh, new cases of corruption. We are uh, uh, genuine about that. We just hope these are just semantics that um, uh, not uh, turn the page. Uh, these people have uh, stolen from Nigeria money that are meant to build schools, to build university, uh, uh, universities, to build hospitals, uh, to build, uh, to create employment. We have created billionaires. Uh, very few 1% uh, of, 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 of these business moguls control the resources of the people. Uh, workers have not been paid in some cases for 10 months, up to a year in some states of, of not being paid because money that are due for to them have been stolen by politically exposed persons. So General uh, President Buhari cannot turn the page. We are going to make sure, even as we support him, that he doesn't turn the page. Uh, if, it, if he insists on turning the page, then we would have to um, uh, 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 lay it clear to the Nigerian people that they can't let him turn the page. People must be held to account. He is quite right. You shouldn't start going to wish on people just for the sake of uh, wish hunting. And the best way not to wish on people is to make sure that um, members of your own political parties who might be found to be 
corrupt are also made accountable. That would uh, to this, to do it in a very fair-minded way. But we cannot turn the page as a country after it's grounded as a result of the corruption being perpetrated by very few people who buy houses in New York, where you are, in London, where I am speaking to you from, and in most of the Western world, and they keep their kids abroad and enslave uh, millions of children in Nigeria. Uh, we can't just turn that page. Hmm. Interesting point that you make there, but considering the rather delicate nature of Nigerian, the Nigerian political structure, do you think the president will have the support of Nigerians if he decides to crack the whip and crack it really hard? Look, uh, the president of Nigeria, look, he made one very key statement today. And I was, I have been worried, I must tell you, even though I traveled home to join his presidential campaign committee and support him, but I have been very, very worried by the characters I've been seeing around him quite recently, the same oil cabals who have grounded our country, the same people who surrounded Jonathan and made sure they benefited from the blood of our people. But I was quite uh, happy today when I had that very strong statement from him today when he said, I belong to everybody, I belong to nobody. Mm. That is stamping his of independence. And I hope he recognizes the fact, and I hope that statement means it would, uh, it would only derive his mandate from the Nigerian people. The Nigerian people are yearning that people should be held to account, not just good luck, Jonathan, presidents before him, public office holders before him. If the president uh, is able to crack down on every Nigerian and including people who are not in, in public office, and people see uh, proceeds that are recovered, invested on the economy, invested on education, invested on health care, it will definitely have the support of the Nigerian masses. It would even have the support of even people who did not vote for him. Uh, I think he is old and smart and wise enough to recognize that, that he got elected because Nigerian people want I just uh, want change from uh, PDP to another PDP called APC. They wanted a, a transformation uh, of our politics from uh, business, uh, uh, business as usual to change into a, 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 a time when people can know that the laws and the institutions of the countries will work for the benefit of the Nigerian people. Mm. And finally, Kayode, um, 100 days. It's now very official. It's He's no more... President-elect Buhari, he's now President Buhari, um, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. What do you expect to see in his first 100 days in office? I, I expect the first, the major thing I do expect is a symbolic change uh, in, his, in, in the way public office holders live their lives exemplary. It doesn't cost anything if we see our president get going with less number of entourage, uh, uh, stream the number of our political appointees, um, uh, restore confidence in the institution by not interfering in, in other arms of government, by letting things run. Those are smooth. And then if we would also be looking at how much he's going to spend on his food, the, the last president spent over a billion naira on food alone in the president's uh, the exemplary leadership would give people a sign, a signal of where the, the, the government is, uh, the direction of the government. I must say that inheriting a, a, a country that is crippling, uh, uh, a huge debt, almost $60 billion in debt, and um, the, the Nigerians would want to see how he's going to go about chasing uh, uh, where those money has been hidden by those who, who took those money away, and then identifying the, the, the problems of the society, how he will go about uniting Nigerians in the sense that, remember, South and the southeast of Nigeria uh, did not vote for him in large numbers. So people will be looking at how he's going to reconcile with that part of the country. And we, 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 we are going to hold him accountable in 100 days' time. And um, I am quite confident that he's capable. Well, of course, uh, his cautious or optimism, knowing that his, uh, his government and the, the, the party that brought him into power was a coalition of the good, the bad, and ugly of the Nigerian society. Very interesting. You are a journalist. Are you one of those who is ready to give him the first 100, 100 days without any comment and then pick up your critique of him after 100 days? Or you think we should, he should hit the ground running and the press should actually be on his tail from day zero? 
even when I was appointed as a member of his uh, uh, national campaign committee, I, I still held him to account. I think it is uh, the role of everybody who supports Buhari and whoever does not support Buhari to hold the Buhari administration to account right from day one, right from today. Like, there are some things I did observe today that I didn't feel comfortable about. I wasn't fearful in mentioning them, uh, because it is only when you hold them to account from day one that uh, they, they make sure they don't make another mistake. Uh, the, the, my first criticism was when uh, the first lady, the new first lady, uh, the, on Twitter was uh, sort of um, making policy statements, and as this is not on, uh, this is not accept. We are not going to replace uh, an emp empress, uh, Dem Jonathan, with another uh, empress, Aisha Buhari. And to our credit, it, they changed direction. They delete those tweets. Even yesterday, uh, when it was, she was being referred to as the office of the uh, First Lady, Nigerians on social media said that is not acceptable, and that was adjusted. And those are the kind of reactions we want from those who govern or that those criticisms were taken on board and adjustments were, were made. So it's a sign that change is here to stay, hopefully. Kayode Ogunda Mishi, your time with us is very much appreciated, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kayode Ogunda Mishi, blogger, TV personality, and democracy activist. Sarah TV, stay tuned. There's more coming.